Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com, and I just noticed that Rockwell released version 31 of Studio 5000, and so I thought we would take a look at it and see what uh, new features are included in this latest version of Rockwell's programming software for the Compact Control Logics uh, line of programmable automation controllers. So if we come down here, we'll get right to the new features here. And uh, the first thing they've documented here in the release notes is a security toolbar and lock all component locking. So if you're using a 5x80, like a God Logix 5380 or 5580, or a Compact Control Logix 5380, 5580, or even the 5480 Compact Logix with the built-in uh, PC, um, you now have the abilities to uh, use these features to uh, lock add-on instructions and routines after they were protected with license-based source protection. Now, this is it's a very cool feature, granted, uh, this license-based source protection, but are a lot of people using it? You know, I, I think most people are not, but uh, if you are, this would be a big feature for you. Um, you can see some additional things here, tag-based alarms and alarm definitions. Now, these are very cool as they... Um, really add an ability to add thousands of uh, tag base alarms and definitions in the controller on the 5x80 products. Um, we couldn't do that with um, instruction based alarms because they used a lot of horsepower and they used a lot of memory. But now with these new tag base alarms and alarm definitions, it doesn't really burden the processor or the core of the processor that's running your code. It uses a separate core, that's the way I understand it, to process everything. So it has nearly zero impact on your scan time and gives you the ability not only just to add, you know, a digital or analog alarm, but you can add alarm definitions to pretty much anything in your, uh, in your um, tag database. So very cool. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying this out. I don't actually have a 5x80 controller. Um, I'm looking at picking one up, but they are quite expensive. So, um, but very cool anyways. If you're interested in doing alarming in a 5x80, uh, ask your local rep for a presentation on that because uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, they also added some SIP Energy object-backed tags. And um, if you're doing anything with energy and you're using software that supports this new SIP energy uh, feature, then that's cool. It does a lot of the stuff in the back end for you. Again, only on the 5x80 controllers. A bunch of new safety instructions for drives, including things like safe feedback scaling, safe stop one and two, safe operating stop, safely limited speed, safely limited position, safe direction, and safe brake control with external brake. So uh, those are all pretty cool uh, new features to have if you're doing any integrated safety with drives. Um, there's also a bunch of new motion stuff here. Let's take a look at that. Uh, kinematics motion instructions. So these are new things for kinematics, including, and again, these are also 5x80 only uh, features according to the release notes. So uh, these new instructions include motion coordinated transfer with orientation, motion calculated transform position with orientation, and motion coordinated path move. Now they also increase kinematic support in six linear interpolation, three to five axis delta geometry, and tool center point programming with dynamic tool offsets. So I don't know a lot about motion. This all sounds like good stuff, but I'll let those of you who are using uh, motion control and kinematics tell me whether or not this is really going to improve or uh, enhance your programs that you're writing right now. Now, this next feature is, again, pretty cool. It's a license validation instruction. So let's say you've uh, added um, a license to a routine or add an instruction. This instruction will now check to see if that license has expired or not. So a lot of possibilities for this, especially for OEMs who are doing um, systems as services. But uh, again, I don't think most people will use this, but uh, still uh, a nice feature, you know, especially if a if you're getting installment payments from your end user and uh, you know you can let them know up front you know if uh, you know we have to come in on a regular basis to update the controller or uh, it'll stop working 
you know, and this coincides with the updates and payments we receive from you. In any case, uh, they also added this thing called Factory Talk Links Network Browser, and I can't wait to try that out if I can get my hands on a uh, on a copy of the software here. It allows you to add or change the Ethernet driver and configuration within the browser itself. So you don't have to, you know, alt tab over to Lynx Classic, change everything, and then alt tab back over to uh, Studio 5000. So uh, my understanding is that Factory Talk Lynx is just RS Lynx Enterprise, which uh, for some, RS Lynx Enterprise is a four-letter word. So um, we'll see how that integration goes. Um, new SIL and PL options for safety controllers. Now, we talked about this late last year where they were allowing the ability to use either a safety controller by itself or a safety controller with a partner to you know either enable SIL2 or SIL3 or PLD versus PLE. And so what we're getting here with these new uh, SIL PL options is if you select you know SIL2, you don't have to have a safety partner and the safety partner will be removed from the IO tree. Now if you choose SIL3, automatically added to the IL tree will be the safety partner and that will be required in your project. So um, that's pretty cool. Help has been converted to HTML with some new features and uh, functions. Nothing really exciting there for me at least. But now we get into the enhanced features. Now we talked about this late last year that they were going to be changing the interface and making it look better and more consistent with their other products. And uh, we already talked earlier in the week about Factory Talk View 10 and some of the things they did with docking things to the right hand side of the window and whatnot. So on Logic's Designer, what they've said they've done to the interface is they They've really redesigned it to improve how much space you have for editing and kind of increase the consistency of workflows. You know, they've updated icons and images and whatnot, but they've also um, made it so you can undock windows. So if you're one of those people, again, we talked about this with Factory Talk View 10. If you're one of those people like me who, who really all your workstations have multiple monitors this is great because now you you have this built-in support from being able to undock um, windows from the main application window and use them on multiple monitors and to support that they also added zoom and bookmark functionality to each editor so um, you know they did some other things uh, descriptions and operands and values can be shown or hidden um, based on what your requirements are and um, as well as other things now Besides that kind of interface uh, enhancement, they also made enhancements to the structured text editor. Now, this is some cool stuff. It makes it more like Visual Studio, in my opinion. They added the ability to uh, use outlining to organize your structured text routines into collapsible segments. Now, for any of you who ever used uh, Pascal back in the day, that programming language, being able to have that outlining feature was huge. And um, just keeping everything organized. And if you've ever used great little programs like Notepad++, you'll know how cool it is when you're doing any type of web development or working with XML files to be able to collapse segments. It's just a great feature. It makes, keeps everything tidy and it organized and just really enhances programming. And I'm, so I'm very glad to see that they're adding that as well as the ability to insert code snippets as well as completion prompts. So when you're typing in your code in the editor, you get these completion prompts to see what possible completion options are. Again, the speed development. So all very cool stuff. I'm a huge uh, structured text fan. Um, I do, you know, managing the websites, I do a lot in HTML, XML, CSS. And I started back in the day with basic on a Commodore VIC-20. So um, text is a big part of my background. And so anybody out there who's like me, who likes using text, these are great updates, great, you know, quality of life usability updates. So good to see that happening. Now, I'm also a big fan of Function Block, and they've done some cool things with Function Blocks, too. They defaulted the, the sheet size to 11 by 17 in landscape, which is cool. And then they allow you to change the sheet size while online. So that's also cool. Options are great, right? And they added the ability to force IO tags from the context menu, as well as the ability to modify operand values directly. So all good stuff. They also enhanced the data type box and the tag editor, the user defined data type editor, and the add on instruction editor. So you can now paste in special characters like commas, colons, square brackets, etc. And uh, the message tag, now this is strange, but you can now add it either as controller scoped or program local scoped, but only on 5x80s. 
So, you know, Compact Logic's 5380, 5480, and Control Logic's 5580. So, um, cool, but why is it only limited to the new controllers? I don't understand that. Now, we talked about the Factory Talk links above. They also updated the communication menu to support that. So, you can actually select um, which communication software you want to do for network browsing. So that's cool. And they have added some things like 32 byte safety signatures for, you know, guard logics, 5380, 5580, uh, controllers and, um, some new kinematics, uh, an updated online bar, um, a new safety tab. I mean, there's just so much here for safety and for uh, motion that I highly recommend if you're doing either that you grab the release notes and check them out. Let's talk about next new device support. So you can see here, there's a list. If you're watching, if you're not listening to the podcast, but you're watching, you can see here a big list of, of new product support, including Finuc robots, the R30 IB plus. Uh, let's see what else we have here. There's a weight scale module from our friends over at Hardy process solutions. There's some HMS modules from or linking devices from HMS industrial networks, some uh, modules from Metla Toledo, uh, new support for Modbus TCP and serial client server modules from Molex, um, you, formerly known as SST. You can see the partner must still show SST. And uh, I know Jeff Turcott wrote that article for us a couple weeks ago. Please contact him if you're doing any type of winder or slitter positioning upgrades. He's just a wealth of knowledge. He's been doing this, it seems like, his entire life. So, um, plus he does other stuff too, but uh, uh, if you're looking to do your, uh, if you have a paper machine looking to upgrade the, the controls, he's somebody you definitely want to talk to. And then a bunch of support for the 1719 IO. And so you can see a list here if you're looking online, but this is the uh, EXIO, the new EXIO. And, uh, you know, this just as I'm scrolling through the list here, it's digital in, digital out, frequency counters, Ethernet adapters, uh, 10, 100, you know, megabit uh, Ethernet bridges, uh, discrete IO, analog IO, etc., as well as some new Stratic switches. And what else do we have here? Some new 2198 uh, kinetics inverters, look like the kinetics 5700. And what else we got here? Some new Compact Logix 5370 controllers, the L37 and L38 ERMs and ERMSs, as well as new 5069 processors, the L306 uh, ERMS2. That's the safety controller. So these are the Gu Compact Guard Logix 5380s. So a lot of those there added. Wow, that's a lot of part numbers. Uh, new guard logics, uh, L81ES, L82ES, and so on. And the new panel view, 5310 HMI. I have uh, had donated to the blog one of the old panel view 5000s, but uh, don't have one of these new ones yet. So would love to get my hands on those. And then a couple of things from Zebra Technologies, as you can see at the bottom of the list here. There is a list of corrected anomalies as well as known anomalies. I'm not going to go into those because really it gets kind of deep in, into the gory details here and probably more than what most people want to know. But if you need to get a copy of this, just go over to ab.com, uh, go to the product compatibility site, uh, search on Studio 5000 Logic Designer, and then you'll see a little PDF icon to download the release notes. And with that, that's the end of today's podcast. Now, if you thought this was helpful or entertaining, <laughs> please give me a like and a thumbs up. If you know anybody who would like to get started using Compact or Control Logics, please tell them to come visit me over at theautomationschool.com, where I teach all kinds of courses on Factory Talk View, on Alan Bradley Micros, on uh, uh, Micro 800s, Micro Logics, RS Logics, and Studio 5000 and Control Logics. So um, again, really appreciate your referrals. That's how I uh, pay the bills and keep the lights on. And I'm able to do these free videos. It's, it's from all the great folks uh, who are taking my courses over at theautomationschool.com. And with that, that's the end of the podcast. Until next time, peace.